Hello folks, I'm Duncan Matheson. I'm a professional software developer. I've been working for a bit over six years and I'm talking to you right now because uh, Mr. House has asked me if I can do a little bit talking about uh, what programming languages and technologies we use in the real world. Because he mentioned to me that uh, some of the students, some of you students, um, have said that you want to learn C and you're not very happy with the fact that Mr. House is teaching C Sharp. So I went around and talked to a few of my colleagues and, and explained to them that uh, that some of you students said that you wanted to learn C and you, you didn't think C Sharp was used in the real world. They wanted him to teach C. He's teaching C Sharp, which they are saying is not used in the real world. <laughs> uh. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, where are these kids from? <laughs> where did you go to school? He is teaching them C sharp and they want to learn C and are saying that C sharp isn't used in the real world. Oh, <laughs> Why? And C is? <laughs> There were plenty more reactions like that that I unfortunately failed to get on, on video. I'm going to try and actually provide something vaguely useful and not just laugh at you for the next 10 minutes. Uh, I'm going to try and go over why we're all laughing at you. <laughs> no, sorry, so I'm going to try and give you some actually useful information about, you know, as professional developers, what we do actually use in the real world. So let's let's start with C. Let's 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 start with the messy things about C. Firstly. I understand why you're saying this. Like when I, I remember when I was was your kind of age, like C, C plus plus, like that was what the cool kids use. That's what, you, you associate that with like you know serious grown up developers and things like that. Firstly, C. Nobody uses C if they can use C plus plus. C plus plus in almost every single case is strictly superior. So let's forget about C. Let let's say that we're talking about C plus plus versus C sharp, which is a much more reasonable discussion. Okay, so. What are the problems with C++? Well, it's a very low-level language. Like, it's obviously not... It's got a bit of niceties on top of, of C, and it's obviously not as low-level as something like assembly. But it's still pretty low-level. You have to worry about a lot. You still have to worry about managing your memory allocation very, very, very carefully. It takes a lot of code to do fairly simple things, and it's very easy to mess up and really screw yourself over again. Massive memory leaks, all sorts of stuff. Why do people use it if it's so hard to use? Well, performance and memory usage, that's pretty much it. But how much do those matter? Like, the thing is, in real world, a lot of the time you don't need something that fast. Like, you need it if you're writing something like uh, the engine of a game, like the deep internals. You need it if you're writing an operating system. You need it if you're writing something that needs to be ridiculously fast, like a high frequency trading system. But that's not all that many things. So let's, let's change that for a little bit and talk about C Sharp. So I work mainly in data analytics. So um, uh, big data systems that tie into uh, server backends, which tie into websites and all that kind of stuff. We use C Sharp a lot. We use JavaScript a lot because the front end web development use JavaScript. Um, uh, a lot of the big data stuff that we work on, we use Scala, which is like a funky functional language. Our competitors use Java, I think, and some of them use uh, fair bits of Python. All of our app servers that back our, our websites, they're built with C Sharp. They don't have to be built with C Sharp, like, you can build them in... People do it in Java a lot. Um, you can do it in JavaScript these days, like run it on Node.js. Um, but you're pretty much talking about that, like you're building a web server, uh, or an app, app server for a website, you're building it in like one of those things. And they're all pretty similar to each other. Like realistically, once you've learned one, the others are pretty easy to learn. Like C Sharp and Java are very similar to each other. C Sharp is honestly better. Um, it's 
more powerful than Java, but without being more complex. Java is a little bit painful to use after you use C Sharp for a while, but it's very, still very popular and very similar. Um, and yeah, Python, JavaScript, all those kinds of things, they're very, very similar. They're, they're all garbage collected languages. They all have relatively similar syntax. They're fairly easy to use, easy to program. Things like C++, very, very different. Because in C++ and C, you have to do a lot more manual memory management and you take a lot more code to do simple things. Sometimes you need the power of C++, but most of the time you don't. And like, why do we in the real world use C Sharp and Java and JavaScript and Python and Scala and things like that? And what's the reason? Well, it's very, very simple. People are expensive. The number one cost on a development project, any software development project, is people. And you waste huge amounts of time programming in things like C++ it is not worth the time. Like you're talking about really small performance improvements in the big scheme of things if you switch to C++, but you will slow down your development effort, you'll make maintaining more complex. It is hell. It is not worth it. Like we're not, most of the time in most industries, you do not deal with code that needs to be so fast that you need to write in C++ and so people don't. People go to immense efforts to try and make sure that they don't have to write C++. So sure, if you're writing something like a game engine or really, really low level stuff, yeah, you have to write C++. People try and use other things on top of a C++ engine in order to write game logic that is simpler and easier to, to write and maintain. So uh, scripting languages like Lua are very popular in a lot of games so that you can try and write as much code as possible that isn't that performance sensitive without actually having to write in C++ because something like Lua, it's more like JavaScript or something, it's fast to write and easy to maintain. Similarly, like even in um, big heavy C++ things, you'll have a lot of user interface code that they've, there's a lot of libraries that try and pull it out into allowing you to write things like HTML and JavaScript and things like that. I think the user interface in Dota 2, for example, I think that uses a library that allows them to write it in, in HTML and CSS and things like that. The Unity game engine, you've probably heard of this. It's used for tons and tons of games. It's, it's impl implemented in C++, but you don't use it in C++, you use it in C, C Sharp. You literally write games in C Sharp. Like you can do it in like, they've got a weird JavaScript-y thing, like it's custom JavaScript, but I think 80% of Unity um, development projects use C Sharp. <laughs> Damn kids. <laughs> uh, performance? What is performance? Some of the code we write here, it's performance sensitive, so they write it in Scala. Because Scala makes it very easy to write code that scales over a big data cluster. And when we're talking about performance that is scaling over hundreds of nodes with their own process memory and blah, 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 like you need to be able to make it easy to write the complex algorithms that allow it to scale like that. So why learn C Sharp? Well, both myself, Mr. Howes, and frankly, a lot of educational institutions like universities and things, think that learning a higher level language is a better way of getting into programming. Um, if you go into uh, uni, you'll probably be learning something like Java or Python. Um, and the higher level language means that you can get into learning how to write code and how to write good code uh, and how to structure algorithms and things like that without having to worry about the details of memory allocation, all that kind of nonsense they have to deal with in C++. C++. I'm not saying that you shouldn't learn C++. I think it's useful to learn C++ for everybody because you get a good understanding of what's actually happening underneath your code. But I'm not saying you should learn it now. I think that the best way of learning C++ is to learn something else first, understand programming, and then when you do get to C++, you know what you're doing, which means that you can jump straight into the cool stuff that C++ is doing. Most of the time, Mr. Howells knows what he's talking about. And most of the time that it doesn't, it's probably some stupid border studies thing which nobody cares about anyway. So, good luck, and uh, please viciously mock Mr. Howells for me because he's needed to delegate this out to me. Hi, Duncan's teacher <laughs> and classroom. <laughs> Stay in school. <laughs>